sporting fine engravings on sandblasted glass, the large glass plate of the exterior wall acts as a brise soleil. It extends beyond the building as if its size has been maladjusted and increases the ephemeral and floating effects. I said earlier that architecture expresses an extremely artificial order. So as to eliminate that order, I wanted the seven levels to be simply piled one on top of the other in any desired order. Going to the extreme, or putting it in another way, it's as if seven buildings were put together. I wanted to establish a relationship between them that was totally egalitarian, free. That is what I wanted right from the first sketch plans. I wanted to make a media convenience store. Ground floor, reception, cafe, shop. First floor, children's library, periodicals, internet, administration. Second and third floors, reference library, lending library, reading room. Fourth floor, exhibition gallery for the citizens of Sendai, currently displaying the first hundred years of the school for young ladies. Fifth floor, exhibition gallery displaying plastic arts from Miyagi province. Sixth floor, cinema, meeting rooms, administration, viewing and lending library of cassettes and DVDs. The ground floor, a seven meter high glazed area. Access is from all sides. This is for general traffic and a meeting place. They are in the building, but can enjoy the city as if they were in the street. This is a public place. In fine weather, the feeling of being in an outside square becomes reality. Facing the trees along Yonzengi Avenue, the façade, articulated in eight large panels, can completely withdraw into itself. The line between the street area and the ground floor of the building blurs, making it difficult to distinguish the outside from the inside. The architecture fades away. The architect went against current Japanese usage that prefers all important buildings to be set back so as to create new public areas. He favoured this new space inside the multimedia library and obtained a prolongation of opening hours. The ground floor is open seven days a week from 9am to 10pm. The setting back was exchanged for time. No doubt the way that Westerners think of space is different from the way we see it. I have often thought about that. When we speak about space, maybe we mean only the perception that we Japanese have of the Western notion of space. We have the impression that for them it means what has been hollowed out of a rock, while for us it means emptiness, vacuity. It is what exists between two columns, the void in which multiply relationships can be engendered. It's an empty space, 
vacuum, nothingness. Let us take an example. I speak to you. Between the word I have just spoken and the word I am about to speak, there is nothing, a blank space. I am interested in that blank space. I find that blank space very important. First floor. Like all the others, a square, 50 meters by 50 meters. The floor plan here has been altered several times at the request of the users while the work was still in progress. There is a simple reason for all these alterations. This is the floor where the juxtaposition of its functions, administration, the children's library and the room for the internet, is the most important. Considering the complexity, it is surprising to find an almost total absence of walls. The various programs coexist, so anyone can go where curiosity leads. The only lighting for the whole floor is the rectilinear series of neon fittings. It is a furnishing that makes the plan, the curves of a half wall for the children's library, the alignment of the shelves of magazines to be consulted, the three leaf clover shaped forms for sitting and waiting or reading. The raised yellow lines on the floor help those with limited sight to find their way. Everything is simple. And as the public and the private administrative areas have to be kept separate, the architect has installed a wall unlike the others, a translucent partition that floats, a curtain. The use of the curtain makes the different areas of the first floor more comprehensible, defining a corridor or a place for reading. I think that rectilinear walls are very artificial barriers. Now you have much more freedom in natural surroundings. When you're walking, you're at liberty to choose between various possibilities. You make your own path. If there are a hundred people, there are a hundred paths. Personally, that pleases me and gives me an impression of freedom. It's the same with architecture. These hundred different people have to be able to find their hundred different paths and trust their animal instincts to help them find what they're looking for. Then they can give instinct its head and find pleasure in just wandering. In the interests of freedom, it's best not to make rectilinear walls. In the multimedia library, the walls, those real walls that go from floor to ceiling and don't move, are very hard to find. Only one floor has rectangular rooms in a regular alignment, the fourth floor, 